Before we start, I'm using Blender version 4.3 and my NumPad 3 shortcut to set the left viewport. Make sure you have these extensions installed, as we are going to need it. Go to Edit, Preferences, Git Extensions, and install Loop Tools and Extra Curve Objects. First, go to Scene, Units, and change Length to Millimeters. Press A on your keyboard to select all objects in the scene and X to delete. Press 7 on Numpad to go to Top View. Press Shift plus A to add an object, go to Mesh, and select Circle to create a mesh circle. Expand the Add Circle menu, set vertices to 32 and the radius to 30 mm. Press a dot on Numpad to zoom on an object. Press Ctrl plus 2 to add a level to subsurface modifier on the circle. Notice that the circle diameter got smaller after the subsurface modifier. That's why I like to reset the diameter. Press N on keyboard to show the properties panel and change the X and Y values to 60 mm. Press Ctrl plus A and apply scale to set our scale values back to 1. As the length of your controller is 140 mm, let's move the circle on the X axis by 40 mm. A fast way to do this is to press G to move. X to lock on X axis and then type in minus 40 on numpad and hit enter to confirm. Press tab to go to edit mode. Select these 11 vertices, press X to delete and select vertices. On properties panel transform, select global and set the top vertex location to 30 mm on the Y axis and this other one to minus 20 mm on the X axis and minus 23 mm on the Y axis. Select this top vertex. Press E to extrude and change the X location to 0. Select this bottom vertex, press E to extrude and change the X location to 0. With the mouse cursor over this top edge, press Ctrl plus R and with the mouse wheel up, create 7 loop cuts. With the mouse cursor over this bottom edge, press Ctrl plus R and with the mouse wheel up, create 3 loop cuts. Press tab to exit edit mode. Go to object, set origin and select Origin to 3D Cursor. This will reset the origin of the mesh to the 3D Cursor location. Go to the Modifiers panel, press Add Modifier, Generate and add a Mirror Modifier. Move the Mirror Modifier to the top of the list and rename the mesh. Now the base outline of the controller is created. Notice I have already applied the Mirror Modifier. To do that, click on the down arrow and select Apply or just place the mouse cursor over the modifier and press Ctrl plus A to apply the modifier. Press Shift plus A and create a mesh circle. Set vertices to 32, press Ctrl plus 2, set the diameter to 53 mm, press Ctrl plus A and apply scale. Move the circle 40 mm to the right. Press G to move, X to lock axis, type 40 and enter to confirm. Press the dot on numpad to zoom on object, Shift plus S and select Cursor to select it. This will change the start position of new objects you create. Press Shift plus A and create a mesh circle. Set vertices to 16, press Ctrl plus 2, set the diameter to 13 mm, press Ctrl plus A and apply scale. Move this circle 13 mm to the left. Press G to move, X to lock axis, type minus 13 and enter to confirm. Press Shift plus T to duplicate the circle and right mouse click to cancel the move and return it from its original location. Move it 16.725mm to the right. Press G to move, X to lock axis, type 16.725 and enter to confirm. Press Shift plus T to duplicate and set diameter to 11mm. Select the other circle, press Shift plus T to duplicate and set diameter to 11 mm Apply a scale to both circles. Select both 13mm circles and press Ctrl plus J. Make sure to select the left circle last to keep its origin point. This is important because all transforms we do will be based on this point. Press tab to go to edit mode and delete half of both circles. Just select these two inner vertices, press Ctrl plus plus sign three times to expand the selection and X to delete them. Select these top two vertices, press F, Ctrl plus R and create 3 loop cuts. Select these bottom two vertices. Press F, Ctrl plus R and create 3 loop cuts. Select the top row 
and change the Y location to 6.5 mm. Select the bottom row and change the Y location to minus 6.5 mm. Press tab to exit edit mode. Select the left circle, the right circle, the bigger shape and press Ctrl plus J. Make sure to select the bigger shape less to keep its origin point. Rotate 39 degrees on the Z axis. Press R to rotate, Z to lock axis, type 39 and enter to confirm. Press Shift plus D to duplicate the mesh. Press G to move, X to lock axis, type 13 and enter to confirm. Press G to move, Y to lock axis, type minus 10.5 and enter to confirm. Make sure the 3D cursor is at the center. If not, just press Shift plus C. Press Shift plus A and create a mesh circle. Set vertices to 32, press Ctrl plus 2, set the diameter to 33 mm, press Ctrl plus A and apply scale. Press G to move, X to lock axis, type minus 40 and enter. Press the dot on numpad to zoom on object. Press Shift plus S and select cursor to select it. Press Shift plus A and create a mesh plane. Set the X and Y dimensions to 9 mm, press Ctrl plus A and apply scale. Press tab to go to edit mode, right mouse and select subdivide. Now let's create the D-pad cross shape. Select the top row, press E to extrude, Y to lock axis, type 8 and enter. Select the right row, press E to extrude, X to lock axis, type 8 and enter. Select the bottom row, press E to extrude, Y to lock axis, type minus 8 and enter. Select the left row, press E to extrude, X to lock axis, type minus 8 and enter. Press A to select all, X to delete and select only faces. Select these inner 5 vertices and press X to delete. Select these outer corner vertices and press Ctrl plus B to create a bevel. Change effect to vertices, width to 1.5 mm and segments to 2. Select these inner corner vertices and press Ctrl plus B to create a bevel. Change effect to vertices, width to 0.5 mm and segments to 2. Press 2 on keyboard to go to edge select. Select these 8 edges, right mouse and select subdivide. Press tab to exit edit mode. Shift select the circle, the controller mesh and press Ctrl plus J. Make sure the 3D cursor is at the center, if not, just press Shift plus C. Press Shift plus A and create a mesh circle. Set vertices to 16. Press Ctrl plus 2. Set the diameter to 6 mm. Press Ctrl plus A and apply scale. Press Shift plus D to duplicate and G to move. X to lock axis. Type minus 7.5 and enter. Shift select the first one and press Ctrl plus J to join. Press Tab to go to edit mode. Select this middle two vertices. Press Ctrl plus plus sign three times to expand selection and press X to delete. Select these top two vertices, press F to create a new edge, Ctrl plus R and create three loop cuts. Select these bottom two vertices, press F, Ctrl plus R and create three loop cuts. Select the top row and change Y location to 3 mm. Select the bottom row and change Y location to minus 3 mm. Press tab to exit edit mode. Press G to move, X to lock axis, type minus 10 and enter. Press G to move, Y to lock axis, type minus 2.5 and enter. Press R to rotate, Z to lock axis, type 38 and enter. Press Shift plus D to duplicate and G to move, X to lock axis, type 15.5 and enter. Select both shapes, the controller mesh, and press Ctrl plus J. Now we'll start building the mesh faces. This is a process of selecting vertices or edges and fill in the faces pressing the F key. Go to edit mode, select this D-pad circle and press the dot to zoom. Select these four D-pad vertices and press F to create a new face. Repeat this step on the other sides of the shape. With Ctrl plus R, create one loop cut on each face we just created. Select these four edges and with the transform pivot point set to medium point, press S to scale, hold control, drag the mouse to scale up once and left click to confirm. Select these four inner corner vertices and press F to create a face. Repeat this step to create the other seven corner faces. 
Select these four vertices and press F to create a new face. Repeat this step until you have filled all the faces between the circle and the D-pad shape. Select the D-pad edge loop, press F to fill, press I to create an inset, drag and left click to confirm. Change thickness value to 0.5mm, press X to delete and select faces to delete the face. Select these two oval edge loops and press the dot on numpad to zoom on selection. Select these outer two vertices, press S, 1.5 and enter. Make sure to use medium point on transform pivot point. Repeat this step on the other three similar edges. Start filling the faces as shown here. Create these 10 faces around the Y button. Create these 10 faces around the X button. Create these 10 faces around the A button. And create these 10 faces around the B button. Start filling these faces between A and B button. Press Ctrl plus R to create a loop cut and fill the remaining 4 faces. Start filling the faces between the X and Y button. Press Ctrl plus R to create a loop cut and fill the remaining four faces. Select the Y button edge loop, press F to fill, I to inset, set thickness to 0.5 mm and X to delete the face. Select the X button edge loop, press F to fill, I to inset, set thickness to 0.5 mm and X to delete the face. Select the B button edge loop, press F to fill, I to inset, Set thickness to 0.5 mm and X to delete the face. Select the A button edge loop. Press F to fill, I to inset, set thickness to 0.5 mm and X to delete the face. Create these 10 faces making sure the central edge loop is aligned. If you prefer, you can start from the center, just create 5 faces to each side. Press Ctrl plus R, create a loop cut and scale once holding control. Select the circle edge loop, press shift plus D to duplicate and scale down by pressing S, 0.85 and enter. Now just fill the rest of the faces, they are pretty much aligned here. Select the bigger circle edge loop, press shift plus D to duplicate and move 80 millimeters to the left. Press G, X, minus 80 and enter. Select these two vertices, the fourth up and down from the middle one. Press Shift plus S and select Cursor to select it. Change Transform Pivot Point to 3D Cursor to make the transforms based on the position of the 3D Cursor. Select these nine vertices and scale to zero on the X axis to make it flat. Press S, X, zero and enter. Create these 7 faces that I showed here, and then we are going to fix an error I did make in the top edge loop cuts. Select 3 vertices on the top left edge, press X and select Dissolve Vertices. This will delete just the vertices, leaving the edge intact. From the middle one, select 5 vertices, right mouse click, go to Loop Tools and select Space to space them evenly. Select three vertices from the top right edge. Press X and select Dissolve Vertices. From the middle one, select five vertices, right mouse click, go to Loop Tools and select Space to space them evenly. Select this top middle vertex. Press Shift plus S and select Cursor to select it. Or you can just press Shift plus C to place the 3D cursor on all axis center. Press Ctrl plus R, create this loop cut, and scale it to 0 on the X axis. Press S, X, 0 and enter. Now create 3 loop cuts on the left side and 3 loop cuts on the right side. Repeat the same steps on the bottom face. Select these 4 vertices and press F to create a new face. Now select this edge and press F to finish creating the faces around the controller. Select these four vertices and press F to create a new face. Now select this edge and press F to finish creating the faces around the D-pad. Select both select and start button edges with Alt plus left click 
and press the dot on numpad to zoom on selection. Here's another fixing we need to do, but pretty common in modeling. Select these 8 vertices, press X and select dissolve vertices. Create these 10 faces between select and start buttons. Press Ctrl plus R to create a loop cut. Select these 4 vertices and press F to create a new face. Now select this edge and press F to finish creating the faces around. Alt plus left click to select button edge loop. Press F to fill, I to inset, set thickness to 1mm, press X and delete the face. Alt plus left click to start button edge loop. Press F to fill, I to inset, set thickness to 1mm, press X and delete the face. Press A to select all. Dot to zoom on selection and press Shift plus N to recalculate normals. Press Tab to go to edit mode, A to select all and numpad 1 to go to front view. Move the faces up 10 mm. Press G, Z, 10 and enter. Alt plus left click the outer edge loop and extrude down 10 mm. Press E, Z, minus 10 and enter. Alt plus left click the deep pad edge loop, press Ctrl plus plus sign two times and extrude down minus 0.5 mm on the Z axis. Select and delete this edge created in the process. Select the deep pad edge loop again and extrude down. Press E, Z, minus 1 and enter. Select this circle edge loop and set mean crease to 1. Select this circle edge loop and set mean crease to 1. Select the deep pad edge loop and set mean crease to 1. These will make this corner sharp, even with the subsurface modifier. Move both select and start edge loops down by 1 mm. Press G, Z, minus 1 and enter. And extrude down by 0.5 mm. Press E, Z, minus 0.5 and enter. Select these outer two edge loops and change mean crease to 1. Select these inner two edge loops and change mean crease to 1. Select all four Y, X, B and A edge loops and extrude down by 1.5 mm. Press E, Z, minus 1.5 and enter. Select these four corner edges and set mean crease to 1. Select both oval edge loops and set mean crease to 1. And for less, the circle edge loop and set mean crease to 1. And with that, we've finished the first part of our Super NES controller modeling course. The next week video will be part 2, the back base mesh. If you're still here, it means you're liking the content of this course. This took me a lot of time and planning to make it. So please, consider subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it and leave a comment. It's fast, simple and most important, it's free. Thanks a lot for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.